stairs that go mm -hmm. all the way up to the third floor. It's wow. badass. Beautiful. Okay, so happy Friday, everybody. Yeehaw. Um, happy Friday. So yeah, a little bit. Um, just what I wanted to. Alan's not here today. He's got some uh, previous uh, engagement he had to take care of. Um, so he asked me to teach the class today, and so I am. Uh, and what I wanted to talk about is add-on sales. Um, I think it's something that, for the most part, we do pretty good in this company as far as sales is concerned. When we when we do get the calls, we do pretty well. We execute pretty well with them. Um, but I think a lot of times there's a bit of fear. I know I have a little bit of that fear is when I'm presenting to the homeowner um, about one thing. I'm afraid to start talking about another thing. And the reason I have that fear is I, I feel like I'm going to overwhelm the com customer. So what I like to do is leave a little bit of meat on the bone and circle back later. That's kind of my style. Uh, your, your style might be different. My nephew Thomas, he would just go for it. <laughs> he just he'd tell them everything all at once, like, and they would just say yes. And and I don't know how, how he does. How do you not that. overwhelm them sometimes? You know. I don't know. I don't know how. He was quick too. He was he was quick about it too. Like oh, just the way yeah. He yeah, I was I was um, <laughs> when I when I was in uh, um, when I was on vacation, there was a guy there who knows Thomas, you know, and he was Thomas's manager at ARS. When, when they were right time. And uh, he was telling me, he goes, damn, he goes, your nephew, he goes, that guy, like, he'd be in a room for 20 minutes, you know, and because their, their procedure's an hour and a half. You know, you gotta be with the customer for an hour and a half before you start quoting anything. Right. You know, so, so they have policies about all that stuff. And Thomas would come out and, you know, 20 minutes later, he'd have a ticket for 25, you know, yeah. grand, yeah. you know. And everybody would just shake their heads, you know, because he doesn't follow the the typical thing. Mm -hmm. Well, the typical thing is there for a reason, you know. You obviously you need to establish rapport. And my my thing was always that the more the bigger the ticket, the more rapport is necessary, in my opinion, right? Um, and that's most of the time the case mm -hmm. because the more money a customer has to part with, it just it just makes sense that the more time you have to spend with them developing a relationship and earning their trust. So, um, which is why, you know, when I go into a house, um, as an example, um, Barry Donner, right? So I went into that house and um, I started with basically the repair that was recommended. And I said, you know, here's the deal, Barry. I said, I know that you weren't, you know, planning on buying a whole new system and he goes, well, do I need a whole new system? And I said, well, I said, it's working. I said, but I need you, before you spend your money on the repair, what I need you to do is look at um, the condition of the equipment. Because that's not my decision, it's yours. And I'm just here to inform you. So I, I put myself kind of on an instructor level instead of a salesman level. You know, So that's kind of my style. That's the way I present myself. And I kind of, you know, so it... it kind of breaks down the walls a little bit and so he goes well what's wrong with my equipment so then I pointed out to him I you know some of the pictures were pretty dramatic you know this stuff was rotted out you know mm -hmm. and I said you know you're you're on PCH for all intents and purposes he's like half a block yeah. from PCH right um, and so I, I kind of slowly started to bring him through that and he was like well you know what what repairs would you make? And I started explaining that up in the attic, and I and I kind of went back. I circled back to him. I said, you know, the water damage that you had here before, and how disruptive that was, and everything else. And he's like, yeah, I remember that. It sucked. And da da da. And I said, well, here's the deal. I said, you have a situation similar to that, but it's in your attic, and it can happen at any time. And here's why. And I started breaking it down for him. He goes, oh, the hell, we got to get that fixed. I said, yeah, whether you get a new system or not, you need to do this, you know. I said, the cool thing is with a new system, it's included. It's already included because in, that's what we do. We bring everything up to code, mm -hmm. and we make sure that you're not going to flood. So, so I kind of got him down that road, and he, then he started asking the question, well, how much is a new system? When somebody asks a question like that, 
they want to buy one. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just all there is to it. Yep. They're not going to ask that question if they're not going to buy one, typically, mm -hmm. you know, unless they're just people who just have a, just like to know. Um, but usually when they say that, there's something in their mind that says, I, I'm, they're really, what they're really saying is, I'm willing to consider that. So that sale went really, really well. Um, and he pretty much told me that it'd be ridiculous not to replace these systems, right? So, and that was all just presentation. I didn't even try selling them anything, really. Then, then he's like, well, you know, what's the price range on these things? And I just pulled up the three estimates. I already had them built, you know, because I knew I was going there. And I said, ding, 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 just like that, you know. And he goes, well, he goes, that's a big spread, you know, between here and there. And, uh, you know, he goes, what's the difference? And I started explaining the differences to him. He went right to the middle, and he goes, what is this? You know, and those were at 12-something a piece, right? So, and then I, I threw a discount for him and on, on, you know, on the unit. So, anyway, so here's a guy now. now this is where, it's a long story, uh, but you kind of got to know the history of your customer because that's when the add on sale makes sense, is when you understand their pain point for that customer, okay? So, just, just got done having a flood several months ago, maybe a year ago, right? Um, and we had replaced his water heater and he, we went in and we did a bunch of add-on sales, angle stops, supply lines, etc. Then I was talking about his air conditioner and, um, you know, what, what that could be like in his attic, you know. Uh, regardless whether it was new or old, you got a, a condition up there where you could have significant water damage. And so that's his pain point, right? So I'm asking you guys, what would be the next thing that you would present to that customer? Fin. Fin. That's a good answer. That's a real good answer. I also, okay. Or so another one I would do is, uh, after all that, i do um, maybe an air scrubber. Just because when air is going through, now you can actually filter it out in case there is anything mm -hmm. left in the walls that may not have been caught. Yeah. So air scrubber is a good one. Um, so I got a little history of a little 411 on his daughter. Uh, he shared some things with me about some illnesses she had. Oh. So, and I didn't throw that in there because they're kind of not related to respiratory issues, but he is a doctor, okay? So, and he didn't even realize this, but we used to work together. Um, back at Saddleback is another doctor. Um, like, yeah, you know that name? And then I said, you know, I asked him, I said, what do you do for a living? He goes, oh, I'm a physician over at Saddleback. I was like, uh, I know you. <laughs> yeah, like, remember like 20 years ago, or however long ago that was, 30 years? Yeah, 30 years ago. Um, but he was working there when I was working there, so a long time ago. Anyway, um, and I haven't brought that up with him. I, I just uh, haven't, haven't gone there yet, but I was kind of more focused on all this other stuff. But His wife remembers. Huh? His wife remembers. His wife remembers? His, his wife's like, yeah, they used to work together. She remembers Really, him? yeah. She remembers. She remembers you in particular. She's like, yep, I remember them working together. That, that's, that's why she kept bringing it up to you. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that's she gross. she remembers. She's smarter yeah. than you think. She she <laughs> she's 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 smart as a whip. She's she was yeah. sitting there and yeah. she's she she talks a lot and she's she's she loves her clothes. But she yeah, she, yeah, she, she, she loves, loves her clothes. She's got a lot of ACBG that yeah, company. Super. I don't know. Maybe Sarah knows what that is. I don't know. <laughs> I've seen it before. You know, it looked high end and yeah. Mm -hmm. She's she's like she. I think she's got a membership there. Okay. Um, <laughs> they know her by name. For it. Yeah. They they know her just by the last four digits of her credit card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have all sixteen digits. <laughs> they don't have. Ah, you're four seven eight nine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let us see that. So anyway, no shopping. Long story short, really understanding your customer is really really critical to their pain and offering them solutions. You know, a lot of times people just offer solutions and you don't even, you know, you, you don't know anything about this person. And it's really, really 
important that you understand those things because you might have the best product in the world, but if you're pitching it to the wrong person, nothing's going to happen, right? But if you're very selective and you understand who your customer is and what their pain is and how you can help them, is really, that's what sales is, is helping somebody in their life, you know, that's why people buy shit. You know, because mm. it helps them in some way, man, or shape, or form. You want to fix the problem. You know, makes them look better. Those clothes for, for that lady, her style, I get it. You know, she, she has a style, uh -huh. and that company, BCGB or whatever it was, that's the company where the clothes fit right, they, they have the style right, the price is where she wants it, and it's, it's a little higher end, and she digs it, and that's why she buys from there constantly, because that's all you saw was on everything, mm -hmm. bags. Yeah. Boxes, yeah. all kinds, of shoes. I mean, it was everywhere. Like, walk in I was like, you got stock in that company? Oh like, holy God, crap. Yeah. Anyway, so, so <laughs> that's what I want to <laughs> emphasize is you really need to understand your customer and it really needs to be conversational. When a customer opens up to me and starts telling me about personal things like their daughter's illness, that's like, wow. You know, when you get on that level with a customer, and I really didn't, like, spend a lot of time, but I, I made them comfortable. And I think that's what happens is people get comfortable. And so, anyway, it, it, was, it, it came up as part of, the, part of this um, conversation, um, and, and for some reason, but I don't want to go into depth on that. But um, anyway, the point is, is I knew that I was hitting them with a large number. And I knew, as I was even selling it, I was kind of already thinking, what next? You know, what am I going to add to this sale, right? And so, here's the thing. You guys are oftentimes in the house much longer than me. Days, okay? <laughs> and you have an opportunity to connect with a customer that I don't have, you know, typically. I, I get a few minutes and that's it. Boom, I'm out, you know? Um, so, take advantage of that time and be simply conversational. That's really all you need to do and get to know the homeowner a little bit, you know, talk to them a little bit. Um, so, so anyway, good answer because you identified the thing that I identified as I was leaving that house and I was all like, you know, a little skip in the step, you know, just sold almost 24 grand. And, <laughs> you know, on a flip, you know, and I was feeling excited for you uh, because, you know, that, you know, when you guys flipped to me, I was like, it's a huge kind of like, it's not pressure, but I feel a sense of responsibility, mm -hmm. you know, to make that happen, you know, not for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm okay, you know, financially, but for you guys, because I realize that this is rent for this guy, right? you know, this is, this is a big deal. And uh, so, I, and I take that seriously as everybody should, you know. That's how I um, used to feel too. When I was selling jobs, I was like, even had more of an incentive because I was like, I can't let this guy down because he's depending on this. This right? make his whole yeah. month. Yeah. Right. You know? And that's why that's why I was like, <laughs> I was prepping that job, man. I was like, I, you know, that that I, I was already the day before working on that sale, really in my mind, and I was writing it out and erasing this and rewriting it and okay, this is how I'm going to present it, yada yada yada. So it was. And, and so then I was prepared. So when I sat down with the guy, it was just like, boom, you know, just, just kind of came out, you know. I was like, oh, cool. You know, he bought it. Yeah. So, yeah. The only thing I can say on um, the sales for that, which, by the way, great job. Like, I mean, that 24 grand is just not something easy to lay on somebody no matter what. I yeah. Mean, I've laid it on people. I'm sure Ryan's laid it on people before in his past. Those are huge sales. The only thing I can say is... All of us need to do a better job walk. We need to take a little bit better notes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it didn't catch us in the shorts that bad on that job. We, we nailed it. We knocked it out of the park. But just so that whoever's estimating it knows, like, hey, man, there's some shelves we're going to have to remove. Right. Or, hey, man, this attic really sucks. <laughs> I, but the other one is right. cool. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That's all of us. That's, that that's always always sucks, not yeah, any single one of us. So, so a little bit about that was that, um, and the only reason I didn't go into the attic, I didn't even know there was an issue going into the attic. Oh, well, yeah. I made an assumption I shouldn't have made. 
was that if there was an issue, and you know, like I got to remove cabinets <laughs> to get in the attic, then somebody would have said something. Because, um, so when I go into a sale, especially on a Saturday, and I do a quick assessment of how much time do I have. It's almost a feeling. Like you can kind of feel if the customer's a little bit rushed. And I sense that right away. Mm -hmm. and so what I said to him is, look, we've already been here. We've got the photos of everything. I said, I don't, it's your Saturday with your family. I know you're a busy guy. I said, let's just sit down. Let's just go over this. Give me 15 minutes of your time. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? So, so sometimes it's that way. Well, yeah. yeah. And so, sometimes yeah. just going up in the attic and then realizing it's really tight and then you coming down and they can sense that, oh man, that attic is shot. And now all of a sudden you're pitching things in a way where everything's great, but this attic, you know, can sometimes right. mess the whole It might have been a, it might have been a good up. thing that I never yeah. went up there. Yeah. 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 So because anyway. Like, you know what? But I, I agree well, with it, you and it that's, worked out and yeah. it's it's on Ryan, it's on me. We were both there twice. <laughs> yeah. To the point that we we both should have put something in there about Well, I figured you guys I never went up there. I figured you guys you, you guys have your cameras with you and everything else and that Yeah. I should have done a lot. If there's something I need to know, you're going to tell me, but but I should I normally took pictures and I missed that. I normally I normally I was like that job got done pretty fast though, didn't it? We knocked it out of the park. But I but I normally would spend some time with the homeowner just because it's 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 a chance to build rapport. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But you know, too, I'm really like I don't know. I just feel people when I walk in. I sense everything that's going on in that household. I just I just feel it. Whether there's tension or ease or you know, if people are in a hurry, I just pick up. I, I read cues, and I, and it's just it's not something that I train myself to do. It's just something over a period of time I figured out. Um, and, it, and so I just rolled with what was presented to me at the front door. Like, he almost didn't want to sit down. Like, and I had to invite myself, you know, where, hey, where can we sit? I just need 15 minutes, you know. Like, he wanted to stand there and look at my iPad. And that's not going to happen. That's not gonna happen. you got to be sitting down and make a $24,000 decision. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> I'm going to tell so, you to email it to me and I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, well that's why I wanted to get there because he wasn't going to do that. He wasn't going to make that decision over the phone. No. Right. right? He wasn't going to do it through an email. No. And that's why I had to get myself in there. And I was willing to go with the repair. I was okay with that because I knew there was other things that I could add on eventually and eventually he would buy an air conditioner from us. I was perfectly willing to say, look, you just want to do the repair and you change your mind, we'll credit you because we've already done part of the work, you know, the thousand dollars or whatever it was going to cost. The drain, so, the the traps. Yeah, so anyway, um, again, just, just the message here today is I left some meat on the bone. That is my style. And I do intend to bring up a fin to them or whoever's going there to bring up the fin. Um, but, you know, as a salesperson, when I make a connection with somebody, it's really important to me to circle back and make sure they're happy, you know, make an appearance. Because this is an area where most salespeople screw up. And they, you get people emotionally connected to you. They spend all this money and they never hear from you again. Mm -hmm. That's a big no-no. It's huge no-no. Um, and now that I'm back in the sales saddle, if you will, um, that's what I like. I like relational stuff. You know, if you if you ever meet my clients, they're very relational. Mm -hmm. um, they are. And they'll talk about me. They'll, mm -hmm. they, they, they ask me how my kids are. You know, they know about me. I know about them. That kind of thing. So it would be it would be a very bad thing if I didn't go back. You know, it would it would be like an, a personal insult, right? So you got to remember that in sales too. When somebody, regardless of what they purchase for you, are you happy? Did everything go okay? Blah blah blah. Go ahead. You're all about the long sale, not the short sale. Right. You're long -term not about the sale today. Yep. You're about the future sales. So we might not sell a system today. Five, six, seven years from now, maybe we're going to sell them a Halo. Maybe we're going to sell them That's this. Maybe the we're going to sell them that. Is, yeah. Well. Absolutely. I mean, just in my experience with my diesel company, yeah. there's so many times I could have gone for the jugular and just said, nope, you need to put a motor in this thing. Well, no, they don't really have the money. This is their sale season. All right, I'll put a head gasket in it. All right, I'll put a 
rear main seal in it. All right, I'll put a U joint in it. And then it finally comes time, I was like, dude, you gotta put this thing down. And you're gonna be the one doing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. That's well, I guess rip the engine right. out. Yeah. I have. All right, yeah. let's go. <laughs> Even me just being here going on five years, I've established that kind of rapport with some customers. Yeah. And honestly, that's where my big, the money's coming. Yeah. Is customers where I didn't hit them for the jugular. I just do my job and I take mm -hmm. care of them and I give them their options. And if they don't go with it now, I know when it's time. I'll be the one repiping your house. And I have multiple <laughs> customers, I've been the one repiping their house. Yeah. Because They'll at I was least give you the consideration. At least the time of day, yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. most of the time, you're the one. Mm -hmm. Some customers will tell you, I don't even want to know the price because they know that you're just going to take care of them. You don't By the have way, to kill them on price all the time. You don't as I was walking out the door, he asked me, what kind of equipment am I getting? Right. <laughs> Literally, I was know. walking yeah. out the door. And I turned around and I said, I stopped and I said, oh, you're getting Maytag and here's why. And I, I broke it down for him. And he goes, oh, yeah. He goes, yeah, perfect. He goes, I trust you. Go ahead. Yeah. Right. You know, but that wasn't even, I never even tried selling Maytag. It yeah. wasn't, it yeah. wasn't about a brand. Right. You know, as far as I'm concerned, I'm the brand. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You, try to you sell yourself. Is the brand. You sell yourself yeah. and they yeah. trust you. And yeah. If you try to corner your customers like every chance you get, you might get some of those jobs. And that'll be nice, but long term, and it's slow, you're going to be waiting on people to call. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, what happened to my cousin? Oh, I don't have any customers because I just hit them up over on the, you know, hit them on the head. Keep it in the kidney. Yeah. Right. So, oh, yeah. so anyway, um, it, when I when I plan on bringing up the fin, it's going to be when I go back there, circle back to make sure everything's done right. Um, which will probably be either today or tomorrow morning. Uh, I know we got to go get stuff and everything else there, so there's some more opportunity. We got some stuff we got to tidy up. Um, but anyway, um, that that is how I do the add-on. Okay, so always be mindful in your conversations of you know, and especially the customer's history. I mean, that's what we pay all this money for to have it digitally at your fingertips. Right. You don't have to ask somebody to pull a file. And right now, we're three years deep in history on Service Titan. We do have other history of the customer, and it's in there, but not, not really good information. In other words, we know that they had a slab leak five years ago, but we don't know the circumstances. Right. You know, we just know they have one. Um, and so, but with, with uh, Service Titan, the detail's a lot, much more rich. And I had the, the benefit of going to that call, which we were referred by Serco originally. That's how we got in that house. Uh, um, and they had, th their house is Peck's pipe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? I found the hot pipe. Yeah, but it was, it was leaking. <laughs> they, they had a bad joint. They had a bad joint in the downstairs guest bathroom. Uh, and we had to open up the ceiling and go in there, and I had to fix it. And, you know, Serco was already there. And, you know, I took care of that problem for them, and then I went through the house, and, you know, by the way, um, you got all this liability here at Angle Stops and Supply, and they were the, take care of it, get it done, you know, right? Because that was the next logical step, you know, for them. So, anyway, um, but that's what I want to talk about. So when you do, uh, when you are, you don't have to be a salesman, you can be on an install, um, you can have no sales ability whatsoever, and you don't even have to pitch the product. That's all you have to do is see if there's interest, and you know what, and just fall on the sword and say, you know what, it's not me, but you know, I'll get Kevin over here, I'll get Sarah over here, etc. And um, they're they're really the ones that are the experts in this area, and you know, you don't have to feel obligated or anything like that. They'll just let you know what it's all about. You could decide from there. And that way you create, you know, you're not trying to be so damn salesy, mm -hmm. you know. And you're going to get paid for that no matter what. You're probably going to do the work if it gets sold, you know, so you're going to get the service value and everything else. So anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's something that, and, and I remember Thomas telling me um, that he told me there was a guy there who did installs and he made, was it extra $70,000? on add-on sales a year on top of his pay was 75,000 in add-on sales 
Oh, so he was like the guy that oh go install this full system, and he's like I'm gonna get I'm gonna get mine. No he what. he yeah. went there to install the system, but he spent the time with the customer. Yeah. If they didn't buy AQ, he sold them my AQ. You nice. know, if it, it was that was you he know that would it easier because once you're already twenty grand in. You don't need to oh, like, yeah. really and butter. Not only that, but you're there with the homeowner. The whole you're doing a lot of work, and, and the customer's or, going, yeah, yeah. you're obviously yeah. working. Yeah. With they don't care. It's, right. almost, yeah. it's almost an ideal situation, really. And I'm, and I'm really surprised at how infrequently people take advantage of that relationship, you know. Uh, don't take advantage of that, you know, that trust mm -hmm. factor that right. you've developed because you're in their home taking care of their stuff. You know, they see how hard you're working, and they're get buying you pizza, and, yeah. and getting you water. And, you know, yeah. right? Yeah. Those are all those are all signs that they like you and they trust you, and they're glad Brian you're there. Brian and I used to get that every other install at JDF. Yeah. I swear, we'd come down, and there'd be In and Out, there'd be Pizza Hut, there'd be whatever you Buffalo did. Wild yeah. Wings, or Buffalo or Wild Wings. That's awesome. That's a good story, actually. It's funny when the customer is trying to convince you to drink with them. Yeah. Three years. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. That's when you're sitting there like, all right, they, we, we've made a relationship. They, they yeah. respect they us. They want to the sit there degree. and have a cocktail. They, they want to awesome. hang out. Yeah. And you're, you're sitting I there mean, like, I still have stuff no, to right? do. I like where <laughs> your head's at. Yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I, let me finish this first, and then we could talk about, you know, yeah. you know, going to a bar or just going to your bar that's in your house. Whatever works for you. <laughs> <laughs> and but um, the, the one that Brian's talking about with Buffalo Wild Wings, that one's actually a really good story. And it's all about service and taking care of your It customer. is. Um, we installed a system when we were at Jade. Well, not we, but our company installed the system. Three years went by. No air. Full system install, no air. Never got cold. It was wow. a slimline carrier unit. Mm -hmm. It would heat up, but wouldn't get cold. Five people had gone to this place. Not one single person checked the basics. So I told Ryan, turn on the air conditioner. I'm up in the attic. They were trying to convince us that I hear the draft the inducer mm -hmm. turn on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I'm uh, looking going, the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Burners light up and everything. Yeah. I can I grab the suction and liquid light, I'm like, the, the compressor's run uh gas valve off. Oh Wait God. about ten minutes, I come downstairs. I swear that lady almost tackled me. <laughs> she's, she's, she's like this cold air. Yeah. What did you do? Yeah. yeah. She's like, how'd she you do it? We turned me. we turned off the gas, and yeah. she's like, but we're, you had the AC on. We're like, we know. <laughs> was there, was they the wires. The wires. The wires when they'd run new wires when they did the new install uh -huh. through the same holes that the uh -huh. old ones were in. Uh -huh. So when it got about halfway down the wall, the entire thing shredded. So all the wires were all touching each other all at the same time. Yeah. All the thermostat wires. Pulled it took us about we 20 done. minutes to pull <laughs> that giant knot out of the wall. Yeah. And Thanks. as soon as we as soon as we pulled it out, <laughs> we showed it to her. We're like, mm -hmm. "Here's your trophy." <laughs> and Here's your trophy. <laughs> I got a beast I had that, that day. Yeah, <laughs> I had I had that happen to me once in my career where the furnace came on when the air conditioner was running. <laughs> and I was I was my looking. Super heat was wild. I was looking at <laughs> 60 degrees. Yeah. Super Holy heat. crap, man! I had I had heat coming out of my air conditioner. And my air was tempted. I'm like, damn, where's all this heat coming from? <laughs> and I was like, jeez, man. I'm like, dang, you know. And I said, it's not even hot in here. You know, and yeah. I got all this heat coming out. Like, damn. <laughs> and then I, I went upstairs, you know, in the attic, and I'm like, I can hear the furnace running. I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> the furnace is running. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's rare, but it happens. Yeah. I got my supervisor good because he went out there before us. Oh my God! And oh, he did. Oh, and awesome. I walked up to him like I figured out something that you didn't figure out. He thought it was just a problem with the condenser. The, yeah, yeah. He thought the condenser was too Bad close to the wall. Or something. No, too close to the wall. Oh. Uh, it was six inches off the wall with a slim line. I'm like, no, no that's fine. No, that's not the problem. <laughs> <laughs> the problem was burners are running. You got a hundred thousand BTUs of extra heat to get rid of. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> that's like another house yeah. to cool. Right. Yeah, it's just trying to cool twice as many homes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So yeah. Anyway, um, that's it. That's all for our class today. Any questions, concerns? Uh, no. no. The customer that Renars and I are at right now, 
Mm -hmm. um, I told him that basically we usually do an HPC for all new installs. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was sold with the install, but he wants all of his angle stops and a plumber out there to, to take a look at his house because he hasn't had any, his angle stops looked at in, in basically I think forever since they've been there. Okay. And, and so I told him kind of what an HPC is. And he's like, he's like, okay, so you just kind of double check the AC that you installed. And I was like, yep, and we send over a plumber to double check everything because we're a full service plumber as well. And he's like, ooh, and he looked at his dad who was standing next to him because they were hanging out. And he looked at his dad, he's like, I don't think I've ever had anyone look at the angle stops in the house. And I was like, well, we'll, do, we'll definitely swing by and take a look at him. We'll send somebody up. So if we could get a plumber out there. Might only be a. Home Soon right after we party. finish this, yeah. this will be done today. No, he, right. he has the money. Yeah. 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 How many hours do you need there? How old is that I expect all day. Do you remember? All day? That's going to be worst yeah. cases all day. Okay. All right. Then we, I need to adjust the schedule real quick. We have basically the systems are done. Uh, it just we just have nitty gritty on both fronts. Okay. What do you need there? Huh? Who do you want there? I would like Jesse. Okay, so you got Jesse and ours and yourself. Yeah, that'd be more than fine. That's all I needed. Because uh -huh. I got to go No, it's in an outdoor schedule. Gotcha. Yeah. It's just a uh, you. I think it's you had an 11 to 2, oh, maybe, I, or something like that, but I get to really try to work it out. Like, yeah, it's all wrong. Yeah, it's fine. Just, yeah, no, just take care of the customer and see what I was you do hoping for it to be done yesterday, mm -hmm. but with only Renard's Dude, and I, I, yesterday was yeah. a shit show to say that. I know, I heard. There was a lot going on. I heard. Okay. Yeah, you told me to save the day. Don't worry, Ryan, I got you under pressure. You just call him Papa Mike. <laughs> Papa.